about the sermon. We live the Christian life, not only in the church, but also out in the world where we spend most of our time. Our relationship with God works itself out in our relationship with others. That's what we said last week from Colossians 4. We were reading this and it's all about, hey, I'm going to live for God. And God says, good. Then the way you do it is to live out there for me where people need to see me, where people need to feel me, where people need to hear me. That's where we are. God speaks in this world. And you know how he does it? Most of the time, through you. God works in this world. And you know how he does it? Most of the time, through you and me. This is how he does it. And so Paul, remember if you were reading last week, he talks to husbands and wives and children and employers and employees and such. And says, hey, here's how you live the Christian life in that context. Because we have our church context. Here's how we live the Christian life here. But what about out there. Well, with that in mind, in Colossians chapter 4, Paul continues speaking, and let's read together those first six verses about how to stay connected. Paul says, here's how you can stay connected. In Colossians chapter 4, starting at verse 1. So we're going to skip all of last week's uh, verses, if you don't mind, Andy. <coughs> Go, yes, uh, yeah. And so here, and remember we talked about in those days, 2,000 years ago, slavery was a form of economy. And it's not always the bad thing that we know it to be. Sometimes it was uh, the only option for people. But either way, uh, we are more enlightened than 2014. At least we should be. And slavery is no longer an acceptable form of work. It's no longer acceptable. Back then, there were lots of things that were acceptable that aren't anymore today. That's one of them. So don't get tripped up when you read this in the Bible and, and throw the whole Bible out. The Bible is a book of its time. It was a book of context. And in that, I can always illustrate how it's not used. Our Constitution, our, our, our Declaration of Independence, was written by white men who owned slaves. All men were created equal, they said. Well, we know that. We know that, that you know, they, they were not treated people equally back then. But that concept has been planted and now is growing to where we understand more clearly today than back then, all men are created equal. And so as we see it coming to fruition, it's not complete, it's not perfect, but it's getting there. Same thing is with the Bible. When the Bible says this kind of stuff, it was written in a day when masters owned slaves, when men had wives who obeyed them and, and, and submitted to them. And it's, it's a different era in 2014. We don't have a lot of this kind of stuff, but there are still biblical principles that hold true for today. It's still stuff that holds true for today. So he says, hey, provide what's right and fair. You know you have a master in heaven. He says in verse 2, devote yourselves to prayer. Devote yourselves to prayer and watch and be thankful. He says in verse 3, pray for us. Not only devote yourself, but pray for us. Two, that God may open a door for our message. He says, pray for us. God may open a door. So we might proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Paul's in prison when he's writing this, and he says, pray for me that I can have a chance to speak, speak out for God. Verse 4, he says, pray that I might proclaim it clearly, as I should. Notice, pray, and pray, and pray. He's saying it a lot. And then he says, finally, in verses 5 and 6, he says, be wise in the way you act towards the outside. You know how you can stay wise, act towards people? Stay connected to God in prayer. When I'm connected to God in prayer, I can be more wise with how I deal out here. When I am not connected to God in prayer, start acting goofy out here. Start making bad choices out here when I'm not connected in here. But when I'm connected this way, I start getting connected this way. So he says, hey, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Every one of us has the same, remember we said last week, the same 168 hours a week. Everybody in this room, it's, there's no discrimination here. Everybody's got the same 168 hours a week. It's what you do with those 168 that makes the difference. I was thinking of John playing the uh, guitar, and I heard that story one time where someone was playing a violin and played it like a pro. And someone said, I give my right arm to play like that. And the Bible has said, I did. I did. And because I made use of the opportunity, you see, you get the result. I give my life to have a good life living for God. Well, you just 
gave the answer. You do. That's what you do. You make the most of every opportunity and let your conversation be full of grace. You know how you have my conversation full of grace? Stay connected here. When I'm connected here, I can talk good here. But when I lose my connection here, any old fool thing falls out of my mouth down here. You see? So I got to stay connected up here to stay connected here. And my conversation is full of grace. Season with salt. Salt makes anything taste better. Potatoes. You can eat a potato and, and put a little stuff in one orange seed and plain, you know, cook it up nice. But man, you put salt on it and it's suddenly much better. Green beans. You can cook you up a steam you up a mess of green beans or whatever and put them on the plate and get ready to eat. But then you put some salt on them and suddenly they're flavored. You can take any situation out of this world, and it could be some old plain old situation, and suddenly you introduce the Christian, you, as salt, and it makes everything better. Or it should. It makes everything better. He says, hey, let your speech be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so you may know how to answer everyone. God tells us in his word that prayer is what keeps us connected. Prayer helps us to stay connected. Now, before we go on, if you have a little note sheet there, I did this. I was thinking, well, what's prayer all about? What is prayer? Everyone talks about this prayer thing. What is it? And I gave you a few answers that I thought about. There may be more. This is why you can write some down. But prayer is, in one of its most basic definitions, talking with God. Talking with God. That's what some people think prayer is. It's just talking. That's a good definition, by the way. Nothing wrong with that. Talking with God. And the more you talk with God, the more you have time with Him, the more that reflects on your life. It's also, by the way, I put in your notes there, listening to God. Have you ever been in a conversation with the other person doing all the talking? Never let you get a word in that twice, and then he talks about like this, and then when that finishes, he talks about like that, and before you know it, it's hard to get around a person like that. Thank God for his patience. But that's the way we treat God many times. Let me illustrate. We come into God's presence. Hey, God, good to see you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. Here's what I need. I thank you for helping me here. I need this help. I need this direction here. Help me out there. See you later. Bye. And we just kind of fly in like a seagull and fly right back out. We don't take time. Prayer is not only talking to God. Prayer is listening to God. God speaks in many ways. He speaks, of course, through His Bible. He speaks in our hearts by His Holy Spirit. He speaks in our minds through our conscience. There's many ways God speaks. Prayer is listening. Prayer is opening ourselves up to God. Not being closed. Opening up to God. And allowing Him into our lives in a situation. That's prayer. I'll never forget that. Well, you've closed yourself off to life and to God. To say, I've opened myself up. Change me, Lord. Help me. That's prayer. Prayer is acknowledging our own ignorance and inability. I don't know. I'm not able. God, I don't know. I'm not able. I need you. That's prayer. Prayer is opening ourselves up, knowing that we're not able. We don't know. There's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know. It's the first steps to wisdom. I want to know. Prayer is quieting your soul. There's so much in the world. There's so much noise. And there's so much connection, you know? We're connected. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I gotta take this. There's so much connection in the world. So much noise. Prayer is turning off the noise. Inviting your soul. So many people are so frantic. <laughs> Bible says in Psalm 46, verse 10, be still, be still, and know that He is God. Be still. Prayer is practicing His presence. God's with us always. God's with us always, sort of like the person we, we I, I, I ignore. They're there all the time, but we forget to acknowledge them. Prayer is acknowledging His presence. My pastor, I saw one time, 
uh, I visited him at his house, and uh, he went to the sink and got a thing of water out the faucet, man. And he poured that water in the faucet in his cup. And before he stopped, he went and he drank that water. That's practicing God's presence. Thank you for that glass of water, among other things. One final thing. Prayer is paying attention. Paying attention to God. Prayer is a way of paying attention to God. If you look at verse 2 there of the, the text we were reading, Paul said, continue in prayer. Make it a habit of prayer. Devote yourself to prayer. Do it all the time. Make it a habit. Devote yourself. Uh, be, un be unwearied about it. Do it all the time. Devote yourself to prayer. M make prayer your life. Do it all the time. Uh, just continue making prayer your life. Uh, devote yourself. I, I think about some of you, and I've heard some of you, uh, not only Brother Richard, who's now in heaven, but others who are still here. And some of you people talk about your family, and you say, every Sunday they call me. Every Sunday they call me. Or every Saturday they, they, we email each other, or something. It's like a habit. You have devoted yourself to staying in connection. That's pretty good. To devote yourself to staying communicating. God says devote yourself. Commit yourself. Continue talking to me. Oh God, this is Tom. You know, Tom. Me. I'm sorry, I hadn't talked to you for a long time. You know, Tom from Baltimore. He lives in Sacramento now. Tom. Yeah, that Tom. That's me. Have you ever met someone like that? And you knew him, but you couldn't quite place him? Again, I'm glad God's not like that. But if he were, how many of us would he say, hold on, hold on, don't tell me. I, I recognize your face. I haven't heard from you in a long time. I recognize your face. Don't tell me. I, I'll guess it. I know I know your name. I know your name. Give me a second. Aren't we glad God doesn't treat us that way? It's sort of like saying, when we say devote yourself to prayer, you know what it's like saying? It's like me saying, okay, guys. Okay, guys. Okay. Here's my word of wisdom for you when you leave church today. Don't forget to breathe. Okay? Write it down. You might need to remember this. Don't forget to breathe. Or, okay. No, that's, sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. I'll say It's like this. Okay, guys. Write this down. It's important. Don't forget to eat. Of course we're going to breathe. Of course we're going to eat. That's how we live. So for me to say, devote yourself to eating, well, some of us have, but to say, devote yourself to eating or devote yourself to breathing is not necessary. And in a sense, it's not necessary to say devote yourself to prayer because, hey, if I'm going to pray, I'm going to live. And prayer is the Christian's way of living. This is how we live. If I am not praying, I'm not living. Let me tell you something. It's going to be almost impossible, if not impossible, to live the Christian life without maintaining some kind of connection and prayer to God. You've got to do that. He's our life. John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Let me tell you something. If we don't keep that connection, we are going to shrivel up and die, spiritually speaking. Paul says, before he closes out his little letter to the church, hey guys, keep praying. Don't quit praying. Devote yourself to it. Commit yourself to it. If I'm not spending time with my Father in prayer while I'm here on earth, why in the world would I want to do it for eternity? So I want to spend time now in prayer with the Father. What are you praying for? Paul says pray for two things, and it comes up here in the verses. Number one, he says pray for an opportunity that God would open a door. I am praying for opportunities. God gives us opportunities. Do you know? Do you know that your opportunity might be coming your way right now? God says, pray for that opportunity. A special time. It's your open door. Pray for that open door. He says, I pray for an open door. And also, not only an opportunity, but pray for the ability. Pray that I can do what I need to do when that opportunity comes. To be able to do as I should. Pray for opportunities. I've had this, and I'm not perfect by any means, okay? Neither are you, but let me give you my imperfection. There have been times when I've had an opportunity to speak a word for God, and I didn't take it. And then afterwards, I kicked myself. I said, there was my, I missed it. I had, I, I, I couldn't see it at the time. There was my chance. I could have spoke a word for God, and I didn't do it. Help me, God, to be alert to an opportunity. Now, it's chance. Here comes your chance. My choice. 
do it right at that time. People say, well, you know, I don't have time to pray. Martin Luther, famous Christian from hundreds of years ago, he said, I'm going to be so busy uh, to tomorrow. This is kind of a paraphrase. He said, I'm going to be so busy that I have to spend the first three hours in prayer. That's it. I'm going to be so busy tomorrow. i got so many commitments that I better spend that first three hours of the day in prayer. I think, and usually, I don't know you, but you know how a lot of us humans do, us Christians? I'm so busy that I'm just going to put off prayer and, and put it down the list. Instead of saying, I'm so busy, I better pray so that I can tackle this day right and make the right kind of decisions. People think the time spent with God in church this hour, in prayer, in Bible reading, time spent praying in Bible reading in church, that's not wasted time. Some people think it is, remember. It's invested time. It's invested time. It's an opportunity. There's no telling, and that's the, one of the things that keeps me going here. There's no telling what one of you might be getting your opportunity today. This very hour, your opportunity, your open door. I, I don't know. See, I can't tell. God knows. This might be your opportunity. Your open door. You can't miss it. It may not come back. Can I tell you a quick story, if you don't mind? True story from my home church in Baltimore. Home church in Baltimore, every Sunday, some of you old timers remember this. Every Sunday at the end of the service, just as I am without one real old gospel song. And pastor would say, okay, while the choir is singing, would you like to come forward and give your life to Jesus Christ? And they'd sing that song, and usually it was just verses 1 and 5. You know, and they'd sing verse 1, okay, anybody, nobody, we're going to sing that last verse. And they'd start singing that final verse. And as they sang, okay, here's your final chance. After this verse, we're praying and saying goodbye. Long story, I'm making it short. I think I may have told this here a couple years ago, but let me tell it again. And one of the parishioners, one of the ladies in the church, her husband would drop her off and not come to church. And then he'd come and pick her up. And uh, in those days, the windows would open up in Baltimore on a nice day, and you could hear them singing outside. I've heard it many times. And they would sing, and, and Pastor felt this tug in his heart and said, we've got to sing another verse. And so they sang verse 2. And he sang a third or fourth verse. He sang another verse and sang verse two. And then and he, could, he felt like something was going on. And he said, we're going to sing that fifth verse a second time. And he sang that thing again. What he did not know was out in the car, that lady's husband was dealing with conviction. And he prayed as a unbeliever can pray. He said, God, I want to do this. And finally he said, God, I tell you what, I'll make a deal. If they sing another verse, I'm going in. And they sang another verse. And he came in and gave his life to God. He became a good Christian husband and father. He came into that church because he had his opportunity and he saw for what it was, an opportunity. Paul says prayer helps us stay tuned in for our opportunity. Today's your opportunity as well. I put a little song at the bottom there, another old time song we used to sing, gospel song. I didn't come here to ask you for anything. I just came to talk with you, Lord. You've answered a million prayers or more that I forgot to thank you for. I just came to talk with you, Lord. Now maybe tomorrow there'll be trouble and sorrow, and a thousand teardrops may fall. But until I face tomorrow's task, I have no special favor to ask. I just came to talk with you, Lord. You ever seen that child come up to daddy or mama and say, Mama, I love you. Or daddy, I love you. Okay, what do you want? No, you want something. Why? You, you wouldn't be calling me if you didn't want something. Ah, ah, that's him. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Okay, I'm waiting for the punchline. What is it you want? And again, I'm glad God's not like that. But if he were, can you imagine the father? Uh-oh, here they come. They're praying. Uh-oh, they want something. They want something. Wouldn't it be great as a dad, as a parent, some of you can acknowledge this, it's the greatest thing when your child just wants to be with you, just wants to talk with you. That's a great feeling. 
we've been worshiping in song earlier, John helped us to just be with God. Not asking him anything. Just be with But I put on the bottom of your sheet, and I already have a couple things added here. You might want to do the same when you take this home. Here's what I'd like to talk with God about. What do you want to talk with God about? What do you want to talk to him about? He's waiting to hear from him. He's waiting to hear from him. He'll gladly talk with him. Your future, a decision you got to make, something in life you need, somebody in life you can't deal with, something like that, a question you have, an issue, a struggle in your life, he'd like to talk with you. What would you like to talk with you? Prayer helps us stay connected to God. Would you stand with me? We prepared for it. This is our opportunity.